Let me go over some of the ground rules for folks that are here for the first time at the community board. Uh, we have two public hearings, one of which I know most of you are here for. Um, but that's the time we let the uh, person that's bringing his application forward to give a little background on it, and then we would hear any comments from the community at large. I would just ask this, uh, we'll be recognizing people to speak, but just in terms of timing and just not to be redundant over things, if you, somebody's coming up and, he's, and he or she has said everything you want to hear, at the end, I'll just say, who agrees with all of these statements? You just raise your hand, okay? Numbers are really not going to count. It's what we want to hear in terms of some of the input that has to come in. But, it, you know, it'll get, a little, it'll get a little unwieldy if everybody just keeps coming high. I'm Bill Guarinello, and I want to say I agree with Marnie Pavia. Uh, so try to keep that in mind when you're asking to be recognized as a speaker during the public hearing. Uh, if there is a question uh, that hasn't been answered in the presentation, uh, I will forward it to, because I don't want any cross type of things with the applicants. I'll ask them and they'll give us the clarification that we need during the public hearing, okay? And so there's no action that's going to be taken. This is really an input meeting. And then when we go into the regular community board meeting, uh, as much as you might be interested in the things we're talking about, I'm not being rude. I can't recognize you during that portion because it's a board meeting only and only the board can speak. Okay? So I just wanted to get that out there so uh, people would un understand what we're doing. And again, I'm Bill Guarnello. I'm the chairman. Uh, there's a flag here, so I'm going to ask our new captain of the precinct to lead us in the pledge. First public hearing is an application. Uh, the project is at 7120 New Utrecht Avenue. The applicant's seeking a zoning map amendment to restore rezone block 6180, lots 29, 31, and 33 from an R5 C2 to 2 to a C44L, which is not going to mean anything to anybody until they explain what they want to do with it. So I'd rather have the explanation than reading all the what zone to what zone because you really have to have a degree to understand that I don't even get it after all these years. So, you're on. Thank you so much, Chair and District Manager. It's great to see everyone here tonight. Oh, it's an amazing turnout. My name is Ellie Gewertz. I'm an attorney from Davidoff, Hutcher, and Citroen. I'm joined tonight by Jeff Lebb, who's our government and community relations specialist. So we are here tonight, as, as the Chair pointed out, for a rezoning at 20 New Utrecht Avenue in Community District 11. We're in Council Brannan's District. So we are proposing two land use action. First of all, rezoning, or formerly known as a zoning map amendment, from R5C22 to C4L. And of course, I'll explain uh, what those districts mean. And a zoning text amendment to map the rezoning area and MIH area, which is a mandatory inclusionary housing area, proposing options one and options two over the proposed rezoning area. The proposed action would facilitate development of a nine story mixed use building containing 85,000 square feet of floor area totaling 100 dwelling units, 70 of which would be market rate, 30 of which would be affordable, and approximately 11,650 square feet of retail space on the ground floor. 
Again, just to orient ourselves, here we are in uh, New Utrecht Avenue and 72nd Street, Community District 11 in the Bensonhurst neighborhood. Here's an aerial view of our site. So what's unique about this site is it's right along the elevated rail line here along New Utrecht Avenue, which has the D train service. There's an entrance to the 71st Street Station right on the corner of 71st and New Utrecht Avenue. Our site is here shaded, outlined in blue. It was a Capital One bank, and the bank has not been operating for many years now. It, the square footage of the zoning lot is 18,518 square feet. This is a un underutilized site, as you see, with a vacant bank and an accessory parking lot to the immediate north. And you see with the surrounding area, the, the PS112 Lefferts Park is a block to the west along, along um, 15th Avenue, thank you. And then immediate east, we have a 75 Verizon utility building along 16th Avenue here. And you could see to the immediate northeast is Lieutenant Joseph Petrosino Playground. So as I noted, the current zoning is R5C22. R5 districts allow medium density residential uses up to a 1.25 FAR. So in this setting, on, on our zoning lot, which is 18,518 square feet, we'd be permitted to develop 23,148 square feet of residential floor area with no affordable housing as of right. And the C22 allows for local ground floor use, retail uses and commercial uses under the current zoning. This is what we're proposing to rezone to. So the C44L district is a district that the City Planning Commission and the Department of City Planning has created specifically for sites that front against elevated rail lines like this site. The reason why C44L districts are specifically tailored towards for these types of sites that front elevated rail lines, one is that they're required to provide a five foot sidewalk widening, so giving a w wider sidewalk between the building and the elevated rail. Additionally, it allows a setback at 25 feet, which is lower than any other district that has similar density. Again, the rationale being is that you can pull the building back further from the elevated rail line in order to produce quality units that are pushed further back from the, from the elevated rail line, so to mitigate any noise impacts from the elevated train. This is our zoning, this is our tax map, excuse me, here highlighted in red is our development site. We are also rezoning the parcel to the immediate north, just for a more comprehensive rezoning area. I will show you pictures of that site momentarily, but that lot, lot 29, is not applicant owned. It's currently a two-story building with a deli on the ground floor and a nail salon and with four residential units on the second floor. Our site is, is highlighted here in red, again with the vacant commercial bank on lot 33 and the accessory parking lot on lot 31. This, this is taken from New York City Zola. This is just to give you a sense of that if you see in red, that's the current C22 district. So parts of the C22 district are currently mapped on the adjacent lots to the west. So we're removing that C22 district because the C22 district along those lots are residential lots to the immediate west, lots 27 and lots 44. Those are residential uses. The C22 does not reflect the residential uses that currently exist there, so we're removing those, that C22 district, which is currently mapped 100 feet from the Utrecht Avenue, and we'll be rezoning just as 
the slide before showed just our site here highlighted in red and lot 29 as well to C4, 4L. This is just giving you a sense of the, of the land uses surrounding our site. As I highlighted before, as you see in blue, those are the community facility uses around our site to the immediate west along 15th Avenue, PS 112, Lefferts Park. One block to the south is Our Lady of Guadalupe Roman Catholic Church. And then one block further south along 73rd is P an annex building to PS 112. You see it's a pretty mixed use area with the D train running along the Utrecht Avenue. And again, highlighting the, the playground, the you know, park to the immediate northeast. Now just so some photographs of the site so everyone is familiar with current conditions are. This is the vacant Capital One Bank building on our lot, lot 33. This is a view of the northern elevation of the site and again seeing the elevated rail along New Utrecht Avenue directly above. The view of the development site from the intersection of New Utrecht Avenue and 72nd Street. This is looking north along New Utrecht Avenue. You see there's a laundry mat to our immediate east here on the other side of New Utrecht Avenue. Our development site is on the left on the corner of 72nd and New Utrecht Avenue. This is 72nd Street looking northeast, facing northeast from 72nd Street. Here's a view of our site. This is the end of our site along 72nd Street. This is looking straight at the accessory parking lot where, where the gates are right there. And then to the right is that two-story building that I referenced before that we're also rezoning to C44L, but again, that building will be staying as it is. It is not part of our development site. And you can see the entrance to the D-Train 71st Street Station right in front of that building. This is a look at that building straight on. This is the from 71st Street, looking at that building on Lot 29. Okay, so everyone's familiar with this site. Okay, so we'll go a little bit faster, I apologize. And this is our proposed development plans. So looking at the building, as I mentioned before, it will be nine stories, a concrete structure with a metal panel facade, accented by a light stone cladding system, where you see we've added four street trees here along 72nd Street. And you see how the building sets back already at the third floor. This just runs through our zoning analysis. Um, again, as I mentioned, we're going to be providing a total of 100 dwelling units, 70 market rate, and 30 affordable units pursuant to MIH option two. We're, um, we actually, I want to know, we met with uh, members of the land use committee back in January. And we heard feedback that the committee wanted to see more parking spaces. So originally we were proposing the minimum required by zoning, which is 35. We brought it back to the architect and they were able to fit 52 spaces now in the, in the cellar. So we're providing more parking, but as you're all aware, the, the D train is right here. So this is a very transit rich site as well and proposing 11,500 square feet of ground floor retail. This is our site plan, just giving you a sense of, of the dimensions of the site. Approximately 140 feet deep along 72nd Street and approximately 133 feet along New Utrecht Avenue. This is our cellar, 52 parking spaces being proposed, which is again more than what zoning requires. Zoning requires only 35 spaces here. This is our first floor plan. As you see, we have a double height commercial along New Utrecht Avenue with the entrance to the residential lobby along 72nd Street, as well as the entrance to the parking ramp further west along 72nd Street. This is our second floor 
We were, again, intentional to move, not have any apartment units right along, because at this point of the building, the building still was not permitted to set back. So as you know, we do not have any dwelling units on the second floor right along New Utrecht Avenue. That was intentional to try quality dwelling units away from the, the elevated rail train. Here's our floor plans for floors three through five. There's 14 apartments on each of these floors. And then for floors six through nine, we have 12 units because the building it's back further on the back of the lot, facing those homes, we again, to be cognizant, the residential homes to our west, so the building will set back at this floor an additional 22 feet. It'll be 30 feet of distance or between where line and the building massing. And here you could see our massings, how we're sh showing that setback on the western side of the building, 30 feet, trying again to be respectful of the, the neighbors to our immediate west. And you see how the building sets back at the lowest point here in the C44L allows, which is at 25 feet. We're setting back 15 feet with on top of the five foot sidewalk widening. So at the third floor, we're gonna be approximately 40 feet away from the elevated rail line on Utrecht. And just here's our sections showing that the, re the first floor will be 15 feet high, and then the remaining floors two through nine will have 10 foot high ceilings, going up to a total of 90 feet. And then here's some renderings. Another thing we added here, which was a direct response to the comments we heard back in January, we added more lighting here along New Utrecht Avenue. Uh, we were told that historically under the elevated rail line, it's, it's pretty dark, so we were conscious of that. We added, as you see, two tiered lighting fixtures along each of these vertical bays along New Utrecht Avenue. We also added tree planting pits along New Utrecht Avenue to help with any stormwater run up, runoff to help soak up any water. This is a rendering of, this is an elevation looking at from 72nd Street. Again, the residential entrance is along 72nd Street here to the, to the west. We're having four street trees along the 72nd Street elevation also to help with stormwater runoff. And then here is another look at the building and how it interplays with the elevated rail line. So that concludes our presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, yeah. Okay, so here we the community now. Uh, yep. You need a mic. Okay, here. We're starting with the uh, community. So anybody wants to talk during the public portion, yes, you can come on up. Just give me your name. Hello, neighbors. Hi. Good to see you. Uh, maybe not under these circumstances. Uh, I have a few things to say about this. I've been on this block since 99. In 99, I could come home any time of day. I'd have parking, no problem. 20 years later, if I come home at 5.30, there's nothing to be had. People are cruising the block looking for spaces. One of the things your plan fails to include, or if you go back to the beginning pictures, you have an empty lot there. We have a 13 family almost right across the street from you, that's about to be finished. 13 family with the community center. That's number one. So we already have a problem with density for cars and people. I can't imagine what 100 families are gonna do being on the court. My second comment is that this building is not keeping with the character of the neighborhood. I mean, we've already had, I guess, some variances for the building next door that they've gone up five floors. They've been able to add extra floor because it has a utility room up there. But slowly but surely, I'm being boxed in. 
uh, losing my privacy, density is going up. Keep going back a couple pictures if you don't mind. I don't think the neighborhood infrastructure is prepared for this. I definitely know the schools are not prepared for this. And I think it's absurd that we're talking primarily one bedroom in studio apartments. I mean, this is a family neighborhood. And you keep going back, it's like the first, you did an aerial view. Go on. Maybe the one next. Yeah. Okay, no problem. So for me personally, this is going to block my morning sun. And it's definitely gonna reflect the evening sun off of the building into my house. So at first I saw the building, I thought, oh, it looks nice. Uh, okay, right here. 13 family with a community center. I'm already dreading what's gonna be happening with my driveway. Now this has parking. I don't know if they have enough spots, but it's, it's a lot better ratio with a 13 family. Whether or not we're in a transit hub, people are gonna have cars. And you've got 100 apartments with 52 parking spaces, if they use it, because it's more convenient if you find a spot on the, on the street to park there. So I am totally against this proposal. All right, I'll end on that note, thank you. Peter Trunk. So, you said it very well. Is there anybody else that wants to add to that? I think this gentleman here. And please, if you're adding to it, we don't need to repeat. Hi, I'm Vince Coutinas. I'm a resident on 72nd Street. And uh, I received in my mail on Saturday the invitation to attend, so thank you. Um, I will try to be brief. I just got a couple notes. I will not try to duplicate anything, gentlemen said. Uh, I want to know the developer. When I opened up that letter, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that somebody wanted to build a nine-story building that was not in the character of our neighborhood with 100 units, sir. 100 units, nine stories high. Is the developer saying, well, let me ask for nine, but I'll settle for six or I'll settle for five? I don't know, it's probably so. We'll get a hard time from them. And they'll say, oh, we'll reduce the amount of buildings. Well, let's just go back with what the gentleman said, the neighborhood. In the last few years, 10 or so, maybe more, you have one family houses that are converted to two. You have two family houses that are converted to three or four. And it's, the neighborhood is saturated, saturated with automobiles. There is no place to park, and I believe your Amiga 50 parking spots doesn't work out. It is a saturated, look, you all live there, you all park there, it's saturated. You have the school that just made a new addition to it. 100 units, 100 children, can that school now sustain another 100 children or more? Can they? I said I'm not an external speaker, so I have to do thoughts. And going along with what I said, the conversion of houses, legally or illegally, just walk down your block, look at the electrical meters, and see how many meters are in the house. And sometimes you are shocked, a house that was one story on one family is now three. This is an impact on our neighborhood for sewage, for sanitation, not considered by the developer, because all they want is a little guilt. I do believe that we do not need this, we do not want this, and we should not have it. We should keep the environment of our neighborhood the way it is. There are many of us here, for generations, we have lived in this neighborhood, and we like it, and we like it to keep it the way it was. Yeah. Very, very well
Okay, uh, is there anybody that wants to add to that? I have this, before I call on you, this gentleman in the back had his hand raised first, and then we'll come back to you. Can you turn the screen back on, please? Can you turn the screen back on? My check? Okay. Yeah. Can you turn the uh, screen back on, please? My name is Jay. Uh, I live on 72nd Street, and I'll tell you exactly where I live. I say, turn the uh, screen back on. Okay, well, just to add on top of what Peter said and the gentleman before me said, the, can you think about the 100 units, right? And, um, the sanitation requirement for this and the amount of trash that's generated. We already have a voting problem in the neighborhood across the street along the New York Avenue. So, you know, can you imagine the amount of trash, the garbage on the street, the amount of rats? Yeah, it's going to be on the street, right? So, I live right here. So, you can imagine a nine story building to my west and to my north. Actually, to my east, actually, because that's where the first sun rises, right next to the lot. So, I'm gonna get boxing. You think Peter's gonna box in? No, I'm gonna have a whole entire building on top of my head. So, on top, you know, in addition to sanitation, though, with the whole rodent problem that we have, that we, that's already pretty bad. No, no, no. That's all I gotta say. Thank you, thank you. I've been living in this neighborhood since 1995. I love all my neighbors, all of y'all, all right? Number one, this monstrosity of a creature that's gonna be coming into the community is outrageous. But the air pollution that's gonna generate from the motor vehicles, and believe me, the, you said market rate, that means people are gonna be working, and people love motor vehicles. The pollution that's gonna be coming around, rotating around and around and around and around, looking for parking. That's number one. Number two, the gentleman articulated about the schools. Our public school system is already saturated with about 30 kids, or maybe even more, per class. So another 100 units is just gonna bring more damage to this community. And I rise against this 1,000%. Thank you. Let me, let, let me this. Is there anybody that wants to add to this? Not, we know that you're all against and we're gonna take that all into account, but is there anybody that wants to add to what the four folks have said? So I'm gonna recognize you in the back and then you, but please, it's just not to say we don't want it. We know you don't want it. And then we're gonna have a show of hands. Everybody doesn't want it. Hey neighbors, uh, I'm Chris. I actually live on this block that I'm gonna get shaded in on. Um, but I wanna address one thing, the retail. Retail they're talking about, that's just gonna add to the traffic. We already talked about that, but we already have a lot of vacant storefronts in this area. Why? 18th Avenue, two blocks. 86th Street, for the entirety of it, is an enormous commercial area already. That's where we go. That's where everybody goes. You talked about, oh, there's, we'll put a shopping center, uh, a supermarket there. You don't even know the key food was one block over. You want to be good neighbors. How about the illegally converted bank? It doesn't look like that right now. It's a yeshiva. Where did that come from? That was legally put there. There's still, there's still complaints from DOB on that building. So how do we trust anything that comes out of this as good neighbors? This area is zoned for a reason at 40 feet tall because nobody wants to be in the shade. You're gonna put an entire school, church, in the shade by building this monstrosity. This is not Williamsburg, this is not down Brooklyn, this is not Manhattan. People come out in this area for the residential neighborhood, not for Manhattan. Otherwise, we would live in Manhattan. Thank you. Who is it? There was another, this gentleman here, and then you. Hello, everybody. My name is Jerry. I was born in this neighborhood. I'm still in this neighborhood. 
I love this neighborhood. But a couple quick questions here. How are you to stick 52 cars in that picture? Bring that, that parking lot back up, somebody? The parking lot. Well, he has it. He has it in How do you 52 cars there? You have a valet? You have a personal valet to pile those cars up? Who can fit cars in there? You have like 80 little smart cars? What are you, what are you trying to do in there? Also, said, the ton of abandoned stores like this. Who's gonna come here? Gucci? They come to this building here? Who wants this? Who needs this? Look at you, starting from the Manhattan, the Manhattan Bridge, working its way towards Bay Ridge. It is a disaster. And the city's cutting streets, cutting two lanes to three, making a bike lane that pedestrians get run over by bicycles, e-bikes, not to mention the fires these e-bikes are starting everybody's home. So, do we need this? No. No. No, no. 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 Hi, my name is Marianne. I've lived here in this neighborhood for almost 64 years. My mother, who would have been 115 now, grew up in this neighborhood and never left. You said that you're supplying parking spots. When I buy your apartment, do I get the parking spot for free? No. What are you going to charge? Fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars for a parking spot? People in this neighborhood don't have that kind of money. If you heard, haven't heard, we're in bad shape right now. Your building does not fit in this neighborhood, not even a little bit. Are you gonna have it unionized? Is it gonna be built by union? No, no, guaranteed not. I live on 75th Street, between 17th and 18th Avenue. That monstrosity that they built there. Oh, this parking. They're getting, they want $70,000 for a parking spot, okay? They are selling them for a million dollars. I went to look at them. The, qual the time that it has been shut down over the course of the building over the last five years, I'm union strong, I'm sorry. This building does not belong here at all. Okay, so before we go on, we've had a number of things. Does anybody want to add that you don't want? We have something to add to it? All right, add to it. Because it gets out of hand then, because we know that everybody's here against it, so. And so we can put it into the record the right way. Hi, my name is Frank. I live on 71st Street. I want to go home tonight. It's going to take me a half hour to find a spot. Uh, but nobody mentioned all the illegal driveways, especially on my block. And I call 311. They do nothing. And if this plan goes through, we should all rise up and vote this jerk off city councilman out of office. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Um, let me just say this before we go on. If you haven't, I would appreciate before you leave tonight, if you haven't signed in, you know, as one of the residents, because as we want to put this into the record, and say all of these folks were here and they all feel the same way. But we'd have to have that into the record. So if you haven't, before as we end the meeting, come up and just sign your name, please. Can I, can I mention one more thing? Sure. We already get brownouts in the summer. Let's go add another 100 electrical units on top of that. Yes, ma'am. Unfortunately, that's what happens, okay? No, I'm not saying that it goes through. What I'm saying is that's, it, it closes a snowball effect. I was just agreeing with her. Gotcha, I got you. Okay, well, let's not, let's do this.
Gotcha. Good. Okay. Uh, is there anybody? Uh, we got the rat. Do you want to add something? Yes. I don't, that I don't know. Why don't you know? Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm just going to apologize for the fact that I'm not being here. He's on the left in Albany. I'm going to introduce myself, give two, three words, and wrap it up and be done. <laughs> Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Soya Radin. I'm the Chief of Staff for Assembly Member Lester Chang. This is Vito Labella. He is Safety and Education Director uh, at the Assemblyman's Office. Um, it is a monstrosity that they're considering. Uh, the uh, Assembly Member believes that the the area, the whole, this belongs to the community, and you can't have a monstrosity blocking your sunshine and uh, the garbage, and mostly the parking. The parking is a serious, serious issue. Okay, so we everything that was said is in the record now. It's it's in the, the permanent record that the community board when they have to deliberate. I'm going to say this, is there, and don't kill me, I just have to do this. Is there anybody here that wants to speak for the site? Okay, so it's just due process, gang. I have to ask both sides. So we all know, I mean, I'll just take a show of hands. Did everybody agree with all the speakers? Just by a show of hands. Okay, now what I do need is before you leave tonight, I need your names, just your names, in the record so I, we could say this. Well, instead of having 100 people say the same thing, these 100 people agree with all the things that Marnie has taken down from all your comments. I appreciate you coming out. We're not taking any uh, vote here tonight. It'll happen at a, another time, but it'll give us time for the zoning committee to take all of these comments into account, and they were already starting in that way. So understand the your trepidation. All right, so. No. Right. So um, from the board, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Tony and then Robert. Okay. No, no, I want you to sign in here. When you, when, yeah, you would, that's just to get into Il Centro. Okay, so before you leave, actually what we'll do, I'm gonna make it more expeditious. We're gonna, we're gonna hand sheets around this way. So, yeah, uh, Sonia, look at Sonia there. Sonia's gonna pass that around. If you haven't signed here at all, please sign. And this way, if you, if you do wanna go, you have, go find your parking spot. Uh, it's okay. Uh, but thank you. Because so, impacted by it. Go ahead, Marnie. Now, so a ULERP, Uniform Land Use Review Procedure, we are not required to direct mail. What we did was we took the, um, the study area that the applicant provided and pulled up all the property records so that you would know. Um, if you leave your email address, we also post it on our website, we include it in the newsletter, um, committee meetings are streamed, but if you give your information, we would be happy to send you the newsletter with all the meeting information. Thank you. I live right here. 
lived there 14 years. Listen, listen up. We gonna we have to go on to the next public hearing. So if you could keep it quiet in the back. Hello, hello. Shh. We have the next uh, the, the next public hearing. It's an applicant uh, that wants an amendment to rezone uh, to rezone new six-story residential building uh, at West 10th Street. Is there anybody here that wants to talk about the West 10th Street? Okay, hearing none, I'd like to close up that. Ross, seconded. Good. All in favor? Any opponent? Again, does anybody want to talk about West 10th that's from West 10th Street? Hearing none, that's what I did. Close the quick portion of the meeting. Okay. All right. So, West 10th Street guys are done. Oh. Okay, we're going to open the uh, regular board meeting. Could I, uh, we start with anything from the public, aside from 71st Street, aside from West 10th, is there any issue that needs to be brought up? Okay, hearing none, we'd like to close the public portion of the meeting. Seconded by Ron. All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Can I get a motion to accept the minutes? Tony Troya, Lori, all in favor? Any opposed? Are there any abstentions? Great. Okay. Okay. I'm giving Marnie a quick second because I'm going too fast for her. You good now? All right. So we're now going to have a chairman's report. Okay. Uh, all the public that came here tonight, we want to thank you for providing input in person and by written comments. We will be accepting written comments. And the Planning and Zoning Committee will meet on March 28th uh, to review the application and all the comments that were given here tonight. Um, the public is invited, again, you're invited to that committee meeting and the meeting informa information Right. The public is invited to attend that committee meeting, and the meeting information will be posted on the board's website, and also included in the newsletter that goes out. If anyone's interested in receiving the newsletter, please see Marnie after the meeting if you're not getting it. The April meeting was moved to April 3rd due to Passover and Easter holidays. We're not certain of the meeting format. It might be back on Zoom because we do have to make sure we meet quorum rules. Um, on Monday, March 6th, the Department of City Planning notified the district office that they certified a land use application for 1421 86th Street. Uh, the applicant is also looking for an amendment rezone. Uh, again, go to this, I'm not gonna bore you with go to C4 to R5. I don't think you care about that part, but it will facilitate the development of a new mixed-use 
And guess what? Nothing new. Nine-story building on 86th Street and 14th Avenue. So um, I guess the folks there are not too far off. Cookie-cutting situation. Um, under the land use uh, review procedure, the period for which the community board must review must be completed by May 8th. So we'll be looking at this over the next month and we'll have to dispose of this at the May 8th meeting. That one on 86th Street. Um, that's my report. I know the captain is here. Okay. okay. Captain uh, Commander. Captain Lapp. See, look at it. He's got a spring in his step. He's new. We haven't beaten him. We haven't beaten him up yet. Everybody's been great. I just wanted to say hi and thank everybody. I've been here for a month and a half, going to two months now. It's been great since I've been here. I feel like I'm part of the family, part of the community. You know, like uh, I'm happy to be out here, especially today. I see a lot of new faces. I actually speak in a couple of different people. A lot of events, I've seen the same people. But you know, today it's great to be here. A little bit about myself. Uh, 18 and a half years on the job, four years in the rank of captain. Prior to this, I had a detective bureau experience is where I came from. So I hope to bring some of those investigative experiences down to the 62nd precinct, try to help out some of the crime. Thank you. Now listen, kid on the block, and look at how quick he is. You're gonna, a CP11. <laughs> Well, I think because we have to deliberate on this, uh, that I'd like them to make a small presentation so that we at least get a flavor of what's, you know, what we're going to have to be voting on. That's not tonight. Because we can't, first you got to, the committee's got to, got to review it. So we, we're looking at, there's a public hearing. So I'll Right. I mean, why can't you have the vote? Because that's not the way the ULR process works in the city. It has to go to the committee after we have a public hearing, which we did tonight. Public hearing, no one spoke against. We took some comments. Yeah, it's okay. And we're gonna, I want to educate the board on what it's about before that they have to look at it. Hi, my name is Eric Palatnik. Thank you for having me. Thank you for all those who are celebrating Lent or Purim or any other holiday. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm an attorney. I'm representing the owners of 1656 West 10th Street. You can see it here on your screen. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting block, and I'll tell you all about it. Uh, go to the next slide. What we're asking you to do is to rezone the property. That's what you see here in the middle to an R6A. Uh, the property right now, as you can see, is zoned R41. Uh, the left side, R5B, excuse me. The left side of the screen there shows you what's on the property now. This is on the property now. It's used as an adult daycare facility. It has approximately 80 people that come to it every single day of the week, and it's been doing very well, and I believe operating rather endlessly in the fabric of the community. It's the smallest building on this side of the block. It's the exact opposite of the last application. Every building around it on either side is six stories tall. We're here tonight to ask you permission to build a building that's six stories tall, matching up exactly in height to the buildings next door to it. 
respecting all the windows and all the lot line conditions of the building next door to it, providing an ample rear yard for the buildings behind it, and providing affordable housing for the city of New York, where no affordable housing, or almost none I'm gonna show you, or very little exists in the area, creating hopefully some housing opportunities for some people who might wanna stay in your neighborhood or move in. See on the right side what we're proposing. It would be proposed to have the adult daycare center on the first floor. That's what's there right now. They're going to come back into the building when it's built. 25,000 square feet of total floor area for the whole building, 27 apartments, six of which will be permanently affordable, paid for entirely out of the pocket of the developer. There is no more subsidy in the city of New York. You want affordable housing, you're relying on a private developer to make it. And the only way a private developer is required to provide any affordable housing is if they come here and they beg you for an approval like I'm doing tonight. Every other developer that you don't see that's building a building, they don't have to provide affordable housing. Because most of those districts were created before Bill de Blasio came into office. Once Bill de Blasio came in, the new districts needed affordable housing. Not too many were created. Everything else that's created has to. So when I come in, I have to provide affordable housing. Only while that went on, during COVID, the state took away any sort of tax abatement or tax program or sudden funding of any sources. So I just want to let you know that the housing that's being created here tonight, which I think you're going to like and blends in nicely with the community, also is being provided on the back of the developer. That's no different than any other application, by the way, in the city. I'm trying to give you some education. It'll have 27 units and it'll have 12 parking spaces. We are in a very transit-oriented zone. We're just blocks away from the subway and I have maps and information to show you that. This is a technical map. The left side in the square shows you what it is now. It's R5B. The right side in the square shows you what we're proposing to do, which is R6A. It makes sense when you see the pictures. This, this is good. OK. This is what I was telling you. I was not telling a lie. The buildings around us are the exact same height as we want to be. The only reason we're not the exact same height is years ago, when this built, it was built as a religious facility in the middle of the neighborhood. So it was smaller. We are proposing to have it be the same exact size. We're proposing, shown in the middle, 65 feet. You see there, 64,000, 64 feet, 63 feet. Those are the size of the buildings on either side of us. The building itself has been designed with a lot of different features. I'm going to keep calling to your attention. Lot line windows on the buildings next door that have been protected. The amount of the rear yard and the side is there are residential smaller homes behind us and the alleyway and the lot line windows on the right which you'll see above no mistake that there's a white roof there and it's set back that's all by design all with input from people that we've met with through the last three years of a rezoning process actually four yes it takes four years to get something built in new york city just to actually get here actually takes about seven years to get it built this shows you the breakdown of the building and if you're wondering why it's so expensive so a piece of property for seven years. Here you can see here, I can't even make mortgage payments for seven years. Six floors of the building, the lower floors of the adult daycare center, you can see right here, this is what I was talking about, first seller, sub-seller, parking for the 12 spaces of the lower floor, cellar, and then the apartments upstairs. Everything I've been telling you, it's just showing it to you. This, trying to point out to you that you're not seeing too many small numbers around there, and we're no different than everything else. So I'm not asking you to be bigger, I'm asking you to be the same. But not one single apartment to those provides a stitch of affordable housing. Not one. We'll at least be providing some. This shows you how close you are to the N train and to the subway and to the bus, and you've got options. Uh, I know that parking is always desirable. There is a national movement that came out of COVID and the equality that's come with it that cars are not more important than people. If people are going to spend the money to build buildings, the extra money that's left over should be affordable housing and not creating a cellar, which is the most expensive component of any building to build. That's why some houses that might not be that expensive, they might not have a cellar, they might be on slab or on grade. That's how the homes become cheaper. If you put a cellar in, it's very expensive. Same with buildings. So, next slide. This shows you what we're proposing to. These are interesting. You should study this. This, this is a telltale sign. If, if you all want to find housing for your families, for your children, for your friends that are coming here from other countries, start reading the census tract data that came out the last couple of years. It is phenomenally interesting. It's going to show you that most of the people are foreign born, 
limited English proficiency, are rent burdened, have nowhere to live, and there's been no housing built, and it's well below the city average. Forget about the national average. We're in a rut in New York City. Adams isn't bluffing it. You're in a rut. I don't know if any of you have gone to Florida recently, Arizona, North Carolina, Atlanta. They're building. They're building. We're not. We're not. We're not building at all. I'm not saying build crazy stuff, but we're not building at all. And we're not building, actually, because it's, it's not affordable to build here anymore. It's very difficult to build. It's very difficult to rent a place. It's expensive to rent it. It's expensive to build it. Everybody's getting turned off. It's got to change a little bit. A little bit. That's my thing. Right? Overcrowded. It's, it's not changing. And, and it's a shame because you need it. Uh, I mean, you can read these stats. I'm not going to read them all to you, but the top one. Housing unit, top right. 1.5% increase in housing, 9.3% increase in population. It doesn't exist. So your kids got nowhere to live. That's why people to Staten Island. And they are moving to Staten Island. If you haven't driven to Staten Island recently, I suggest you check it out. That's where, that's where the kids are moving now. That's where the kids are moving. Yeah, well, they go to Staten Island, then they go to Jersey. That's the, that's the leap. But they're not staying here. They're not staying here. You, nobody could afford it. And this shows you the same thing. We're not keeping pace, all this stuff. Wait till you see the next slide. Uh, here, look at this slide. And this is no slide on the community board at all. I mean, this is the same all over the city. Those red dots represent the number of affordable housing units that have been built in the city. And it's in your district, 828, under the city's MIH program that de Blasio enacted 12 years ago. 12 years, 28 units. Two bedrooms a year. <laughs> if that. I mean, it's just, I'm not saying you should approve everything comes in. You can deny me tonight. I, I, you're entitled to your opinion. I'm just saying that me, like what I'm getting amped up, because I'm doing this for 30 years, is we should be, like when I land in other cities and I see what goes on, like we are not... We got, we got an opportunity, we got all the resources. Uh, this is what we're gonna be doing for the six affordable units. It gives you the numbers. Basically, you're gonna be creating units that are avail available to people that are earning anywhere from $37,000 a year up to $96,000 a year for a family of three. It's pretty diverse. These are state provided, city provided numbers. These are not our numbers. These are the numbers that I was telling you before. The affordable housing offer has to provide at the request at, in order to ask for the rezoning. So I have to give this. This gives you the number of apartments totals. See how it's broken down. We could change this count. If you're not happy with the three bedrooms versus the one bedrooms versus the two bedrooms. Okay, that's something. That's, let me tell you why the one bedrooms. A lot of people don't like one bedrooms, but I think one bedrooms are the best for a community. And so one bedrooms capture the young families that are looking to like squeeze and make a little bit of more ends meet that's more affordable for them. And it lets the older generation have a place to live that might not have kids and your own family and it's more affordable for them. Some people say it's not good just for that reason. It's overcrowded and they'd like to have more options for larger bedrooms. So we're, we're, we're not, we're whatever, agnostic to either. Uh, this is just giving you more of the stats to show you why the adult daycare that is there now is important to the community and why we're asked to keep it, right? Yeah, and I'm, you know, 54 this year, so I'm, I got, my a, I got my AARP card yesterday. I'm a baby. Uh, this is just a layout of everything. I want to show you a couple more slides that you'll really enjoy seeing. This is what we've done to address the neighbor's lot line windows. What you see on the top, of the left side of the screen is the front of the building. The right side of the screen is the back of the building. The pole going up and down the side here are the windows of the neighbor. We've designed the building so it steps around that. So there are windows which are not legal. You can't have windows on the side of your building in New York City. If you could, New York City wouldn't have been built. This would be like a checkerboard, one house. But we're respecting that. We're not trying to seal anybody's window. Same thing goes in the backyard. This is the front, this is the back. They have windows over there. Not blocking, we set our building back. What I'm showing you here is what I told you before, that the building's going back 35 feet from the neighbors in the rear. It's only supposed to go back 30, but going back another five, and I'm showing you this side, going 13 feet from that neighbor. This is an alley in there, which is over there. So everything has been laid out. We're maxing out our floor area. We're, the building came out, I think, looking really good. And uh, that's my hope. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, that was just to educate, uh, educate us about what we'll be voting on after the committee looks at. The committee will really dive into a lot more of this. And it comes to
Can you hear me, by the way, back? Okay, so. Hello. Hello. It's because it's being live streamed, so I have to, uh, I have to use this. You see, I could project. Okay, so Marnie, uh, time for you. I did mine already. It's after you. Good evening, everyone. Um, at last month's meeting, it was announced that the board was in receipt of an application for a variance and special permit for 321 Avenue T and 2170 McDonald's Avenue, and that we, we would be scheduling a public hearing within the required time frame. The applicant requested in writing to the Board of Standards and Appeals that due to their scheduling conflicts that we schedule the public hearing in May. So we're holding it over and uh, we'll schedule it at that time. Um, notification was received from the Department of Transportation regarding the car share program. In June 2018, a car share parking pilot program was initiated with 230 on-street spaces and 55 municipal parking lot spaces, which DOT deemed a success and created a permanent program for providing car share parking spaces. So the following locations have been identified in District 11 for dedicated curb space. 1853 Cropsey Avenue, 2215 Bath Avenue, 7201 20th Avenue, and 7901 18th Avenue. Operations are expected to start in the fall and we have requested DOT or the applicant who filed for the car share permit to present to the Transportation Committee. DOT further advised that they are considering for approval the previously approved school open street on 82nd Street from Stillwell Avenue to 24th Avenue for the 2023-2024 school term. It will be Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, you may recall we discussed that the Army Corps of Engineer um, was seeking input on their draft EIS. Um, that's the Integrated Feasibility Study and Environmental Impact Statement for the New York, New Jersey Harbor and Tributary Study. They extended that comment period to March 31st from May 7th. Um, I just want to advise the board, you, you know, as part of our capital expense budget priorities and, and the issues and our statement of district needs, we submitted concerns that reflected those needs. Um, and, and basically, we spoke about our concerns that there would no, the selected plan includes no shore-based protections for the low-lying areas west of the Verrazano Bridge and the lack of risk reduction features and induced flooding mitigation features with and without the closure of the storm surge barrier, which they're proposing to place west of the Verrazano Bridge. We further ask that they explore the feasibility for protections of the combined sewer outfalls along the waterfront to prevent in, inland salt water flooding. So if the public would like to provide any input on that, you can, we'll include it once again in our newsletter. And finally, as a reminder, effective April 1st, the Department of Sanitation will implement the new waste set out times. So for residential buildings, you will place your trash out after 6 p.m. in a secure container or you can place trash out after 8 p.m. of putting bags directly on the curb. I'm flipping today. Or if a building has nine or more residential units, the property owner may opt in to a four to 7 a.m. set out window instead, but this opt-in period will run for the month of January each year, allowing DSMY to design quick and efficient routes. That will take effect April 1st, so you've been warned. What we said we had a public meeting, and I asked anybody want to speak. It spoke up. You know that's what I was saying. What you should, who who else wanted to speak? What I'm going to ask you to do public closed. So what I do is. 
Can you just give her the statement and we'll put it in the record? I, I understand that's not the, this is the now. I don't know why it's okay, I'm trying, I, I explained it from the start. I said we'd have this and we have, a, a, because there's no one else here. This, this is just the community board people. Yeah, yeah, now everybody else left. So oh, my point would be, I don't want you not to have a say, but please write it up and we promise, yeah, we will promise to put you in the record, okay? Okay, so transportation committee, please. Hi, everybody. So uh, I want to first thank the Transportation Committee because we've been meeting a lot. So thank you guys for giving you time for the committee. Since the February meeting, um, we had flyers done and translated into the four major languages and put them up at all the bus stops that are being proposed to be removed with the MTA bus redesign. Thank you to Marnie for going to all those bus stops. <laughs> thank you, Marnie. And Marnie also notified all of community-based organizations, especially the ones that have seniors and have folks that English is not their first language, so that way the CEO could explain those methods on, with the bus redesign. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Okay, Sonia. Yeah. We gave you, I said it twice. I don't know what else I want to say to you people. I gave it to you twice. Who wants to speak on West Penn? Who wants to speak on West Penn? Nobody said anything. So now I'm giving you the opportunity to put it on the public record. I said it twice. I'm not going to talk anymore. You can't put it in a public record. I'm making that accommodation. Okay, moving on with transportation. So I, it was really nice that we had a lot of committee members who attended the MTA redesign meeting, and there were residents who showed up, and some of the residents actually had our flyers and were holding them up. And okay, so February 13th, the transportation committee met again, um, and here are our recommendations, which I need the board to vote on. First off was about pop-ups in Community Board 11 with us suggesting locations and not leaving it up to the MTA as to where to show up. Secondly, in terms of the bus stop removals, what we say is do not. Don't remove anything. Leave it as is. Um, it's very difficult, one of the things we were talking about is that we're going to advocate for certain bus stops to not be removed when, what if those residents d didn't come out to us? So we're going to only advocate for the folks who did come out. Plus we don't have any, they refuse to give any data at all, so we can't even make an informed decision. Number three, the B6 route, keep it 
keep it as is on Shore Parkway. Don't touch that. We want to call that one out separately. Fourth, the express buses to Manhattan. Leave it alone. Leave it, and it needs to go to Midtown. It can't stop downtown. Fifth, the B64 needs to keep going to Shore Road because we have a slew of residents in Bath Beach, and I see them every day, who take that bus to Severian. We also have people who go down to the parks and to the pier. We need that bus to continue to Shore Road and not stop on 4th Avenue. They want to stop. They want it to stop on 4th Avenue. So we're, even though that ends in District 10, we're still going to advocate for our residents. Um, and the last but not least was the B4, is that the B4 needs to continue its route to Coney Island Hospital, and there's high schools over there like Grady. So those are the six recommendations that the Transportation Committee came So at this, what, Jeff? But I don't think the committee said that was a part of the recommendations. No, that, no, 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 it was in the redesign. Yes. And we said no, not to, not to make an extension of the... No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We said leave the bus stops as they are so you don't change the distance in. Yeah, it's the same thing. If you're not changing the bus stops, we're not... Right. No, we're saying leave it alone. Don't touch it, leave it as is. So that way they wouldn't be expanded. So those are the recommendations that the Transportation Committee came up with. So I need a motion. Thank you, and I'm sure there'll be another meeting. Uh, okay, any uh, old business? Any new business, Antonio? Yes, Antonio. Brooklyn Park for the guys? I don't have my voice. Is loud. Oh, ooh, sorry. Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, the Brooklyn Public Library, New Utrecht Branch, which is on 86th Street off of 18th Avenue, is going to be starting to do Scrabble games. Woohoo! Who likes Scrabble? Uh, that's starting on Monday from 10:30 to 12, and we will be serving some munchies to go with it. Also, the uh, 62nd Precinct Community Council will be holding their um, once a month meeting on the third Tuesday of the month. Uh, I don't have a location yet. It usually is held here. Uh, but if not, if you want to give me your information, and I'll make sure that I include you in our massive email list. Thank you. OK, any new business, Doc? Good evening, just a few seconds, okay? March 14, 11 a.m., have very important meeting at our center. 124 MGO. What we're going to talk about is mental issues. Our, in our community, and our senior, they got scammed. Oh, they scammed $10,000, $20,000, $30,000. They have a lot of problems. They don't want to tell anybody. That's why we got to handle it. If you know any friend, family members have a mental issue, please join us. March 14, 11 a.m., 124 MUO. Thank you. Any other new? Saying anything improper? Um, so we just had a. The Brooklyn public hearing, I'm, I'm on the uh, New York Independent Redistricting Commission and we had the assembly lines because of all the court cases sent back to us. So while we had the public hearing already at Medgar Evers some weeks ago, we're not finished with the lines until we have to release them April 28th to the legislature for them to vote on them and then you either do it again. Uh, and the whole process has to be done by the end of June. So if you have any interest, you can go on the website, newyorkirc.gov, uh, take a look at the lines that are being drawn. If you want to make any comments, you can do it right through the website. Uh, even though we're deliberating about it now, if it's of any interest to you, then and, and, you, know, you care about where your assembly lines are, you know, go on and send it in, because you know, more input is better than less.
Any other new business from the board? I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Tony, Jeff, all in favor? Any polls? Good night.